Devin Smith and Jack Steele, both uh, former teammates, of course, at GWS in strong conversation out there. Final score was 18-14, 122 Essendon over St Kilda, 11-13-79. Anthony McDonald, Tip and Woody booted five. Two for Langford, two for Fantasia, two for Myers, two for Stringer. And singles to Smith, Francis, Heppel, Hooker and McKenna for St Kilda. Two for Gresham, Loney and Billings with singles to Freeman, Newmes, Long, Marshall and Patton. The four injuries for Essendon, Goddard with a knee, Fantasia with a hamstring, Hooker, it would look like a knee as well, and Saad got concussed. So there's a fair chance that uh, three of the four, if not all four, will be absent next Friday night when they take on Richmond. Yeah, and uh, I keep looking at the Bombers and you just can't help but think what a wasted year. You know, it's a long year, it's a tough year, it's 22 games of footy and they, you suspect they're going to fall short unless something extraordinary happens and they're just over the last 10 weeks, I mean, aside from Richmond, you couldn't pick a sider in better nick. Yep. Um, Anthony McDonald, Tim and Woody, what a game he's had, five uh, goals, um, how many tackles he laid in the end, Spud? Eight, 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 eight for Simmons Holmes. A lot of that in the forward half and that's what t- turned it around for them, they started to get their forward 50 pressure game going from an Essendon point of view. When they do that, Devin Smith tackles like a madman. you got Fantasia. He wasn't there at the end there, but his pace scares. McDonald Tip and Woody's pace scares. So a wasted year for St Kilda, uh, for Essendon rather, no question about that. They've got enormous talent in that group, and they can continue to add to their list through some smart trading and recruiting and drafting, then they're going to be thereabouts next year. Joe Danaher, of course, who hasn't played since round six or seven, so one of the most talented uh, forwards in the competition. you got Hooker and Hurley back playing. Just a lot to like about them. A real lot to like about Essendon. Dyson Heppel should take a big deal of credit for what he's been able to do, the way he's been able to lead them. And, um, you know, Adrian Dodoro and his guys got to get a pat on the back too because Devin Smith's been the, probably the yeah, if he's not the recruiter of the year, he's in the argument. Sard improving. And Stringer is getting back to the Stringer that we... You know, was one of the most exciting footy players in the competition. So Aaron Francis, another high draft pick. Uh, Darcy Parrish is playing some better footy. McGrath's living up to his you know, first round number one picks. So the quality's there for Essendon. And um, they're going to look back on this as a year wasted. It's interesting with Dana, they've, they've spread the goal kicking load since he's been out. Uh, it'll be just interesting. He, there's no doubt he's in their best forward line, but I wonder if they just play him on the ball. They'll, they'll have him down there, no doubting that whatsoever, but they've had another 10 different goal scorers tonight. Sometimes Dana can just attract the ball in the wrong spots purely because he leads, and it, yeah, it's a great it's a great problem to have. But Tip and Woody, I, I thought he was the guy that turned the game. Him and Devin, Devin Smith, I reckon, the Saints got to point up a couple of really good tackles where they weren't tackling well at all early, and I think that uh, six-minute spurt at the end of the second quarter was the difference in the end. Brokes well, the killed his part. I just had a look at my notes here. 12 minutes 37 of the second quarter, there was a marking contest in front of us, and Anthony McDonald, Tip and Woody didn't go. In the yep. and that's the you know, that's the cold hard light of the day. He there was a contest he could have gone to, crash the pack or crash the marking contest and, and got the ball to ground. And he elect he chose not to go. And it yep. was so unlike what he'd been able to do. And I, I was looking at that and I thought, well, it's sort of symptomatic of where Essendon are tonight. They don't really want to pay the price. And then they did from about 25 minute mark of the second quarter when they got on a roll out of the centre. It just energised them, and in the end, Anthony McDonald, Tim and Woody's in the best handful of players on the ground because he started to pay the price again, and he did it through his tackling and his pressure and hitting the scoreboard. That's the bonus in the end, but it took them some time. It took them a little bit of time to, to really get engaged in this contest, the Bombers, and when they did, it was inevitable. Yeah, Devin Smith, another eight tackles, the leading tackler in the competition, Tim and Woody with eight. And then you look down, you've got Langford six. He looked like he was cooked, so he's come back and played well. And, of course, Merritt's leading possession getter for, for Essendon had five also. So their tackling pressure after the first 20 minutes blew St Kilda away. And as I said, ten, ten different goal scorers with Tip and Woody kicking five straight. So, you know, St Kilda at the other end, Membry was, uh, had a really good game. But, unfortunately, his two shots were relatively easy. And 
Could have had a really good night on Hurley. Well, we haven't started on the Saints yet. Um, they will get some dissection, I'm sure, but we're just going to follow the Bombers down into the rooms and get their soul. Andrew McGrath is going to join us after a career-high 33 disposals tonight oh, for the when's Bombers. When's the last time he had 33? How did last week? <laughs> <laughs> a career-high 33 disposals, Gary, I think I said. Sorry. <laughs> mm. 79,000 members, the Bombers. 79,318. Where's that put them? Is that... I don't know, but it's a damn fine effort third. considering what they've, been, what they've been through. Over Collingwood the past have got a few years. more. Collingwood have been have been dropping. They have. Yeah. Some have been rising, haven't they? So, mm. yeah, those numbers were published the other day. So they played the entire last quarter without being able to rotate. They had 51 interchanges for the night against. Um, was it the 80 that St Kilda did? So, yep. yep. Big One to 27 there. in the last quarter, Jude. The Bombers by 43 points who will take their song for the 11th time this year. most full-throated version of their season. No. But uh, enough to at least keep the pressure on those above them. They'll chase for as long as they can. 18, 14, 122, Essendon over St Kilda, 11, 13, 79. Andrew McGrath is going to join us momentarily. David Myers, I see, see him there. Chemist Warehouse replay screen. He's just developing into the player that I think everyone at Essendon sort of suspected he was going to be. I know... Melbourne had a real crack at him at one stage. Uh, I think Simon Goodwin was a huge mm. fan of him, and he didn't play footy for quite a while because of his... Was it his hamstring that was holding him back? Or he had some injuries anyway. Um, but he's got himself nice and fit now. He's got he's got that big body midfielder that seems to be a part of the modern-day game, and his ability to kick the footy. Well, it was on display tonight, and a couple of occasions it just opened up the whole ground and set them on their way. Andrew McGrath is with us uh, in victory. Andy, welcome. Hey, guys. How are you going? What's it like during the last quarter when you know that uh, nobody can come to the bench? you got nothing there. <laughs> oh, it's not an ideal situation, but um, having a nice lead like we did, we sort of did on-field rotations and got the job done in the end, which was pleasing. Zach Merritt came to the bench, Andy, and had a dummy spit because he couldn't get <laughs> off. <laughs> yeah, a few players had to do that, but... Um, <laughs> Yeah, so be it. They can suck it up. It took a while for you to get going uh, as a group. It sort of it, it looked pretty sluggish early, and we were sort of musing up here whether or not the fact that, you know, finals was an even longer shot than it was last week was having an effect. How, what did you feel about the first quarter and a bit? Uh, we knew the Saints were going to come. Uh, it's inevitable. All the teams in the league are pretty good um, now, but... Um, we just stuck to our process and knew that if we kept playing, we were going to break them eventually, even a rotation or a couple down. Um, so we just stuck at it, uh, stuck to what we were focusing on, and we knew, we knew it would take care of itself. Now, well done, Andy. I thought uh, the five minutes before half time was the, the straw that broke the camels back for the Saints, but it was the tackling then. You, you weren't tackling great early in the game, and all of a sudden, Tip and Woody and Devin Smith, we know, they that has got a couple of hard tackles, and you kicked four goals in the last five minutes in that second quarter. Yeah, they really set us up. Um, we base our, our game on our contest and our pressure, and those two lead the way in that. Um, and when they're usually firing, uh, everything else takes care of itself, and our attack stems off that. And Tip and Woody kicking five straight was great. <laughs> Travis Collier, uh, back into the game, he, he had 17 disposals, he had seven inside 50s. He's He's a player that's, um, you know, had a lot of injuries, but it, it looks like he's playing some good footy now. Yeah, it's great to see him back on the... No, on the park. He's um, he's a great guy off the field. He's a great leader behind the scenes. Um, he's sort of taken me under his wing as a wi as a wingman, um, and uh, it's great to see his his performance flourishing. You were spending a bit more time in varied roles, uh, Andy. When are you going to work out exactly what you are? <laughs> Hopefully over this preseason. Um, long term, I hope to be an inside midfielder, but um, sort of plugging holes a bit everywhere at the moment. But in, enjoying doing that. Well, look, when you go back and you got yourself and Adam and um, Connor all running, it's a pretty exciting thing to watch. <laughs> yeah, it's nice to, to play with them too. You can kind of take a back seat if you're a bit tired and let one of those two run off. But um, 
it, it's a luxury to have. It's not often that you have sort of three running halfbacks that can both lock down and, and run off, which is really good. Take us inside the huddle at three-quarter time. You talked about how you rotated on the ground. Who was sort of organising all of that and how effectively was that message conveyed about what you had to do? Uh, they sort of said that, boys, you're, you're going to have to do on-field rotations. We've got um, pretty much three or four on the bench. Uh, we had one rotation column, but the message was basically to only come off if you were injured or, or couldn't run. Um, so we were just doing on-field swaps, uh, midfield back forward, just just ticking the legs over and hoping we'd run out the game fine. Well, what, you did. Yeah, what role did the overall play in it uh, at is last week? I mean, you knew your scenario. You had to keep winning. You go down narrowly. How do you avoid that being deflating? Yeah, no doubt it was disappointing last week. Um, we didn't play to the best of our ability, and we came so close. So I guess the Saturday-Sunday was sort of our time to reflect on that, but when Monday came around, we were just focusing on the Saints, and we knew we were still mathematically a chance, so um, the, the morale has been great around the club. We're still positive that we can win the next two games and give ourselves the best opportunity. Will you torture yourself watching the rest of the footy this weekend, <laughs> or is it what will be, will be? Yeah, what will be, will be. Uh, we'll probably watch um, a few games intently to see how they go, but um, it, it's in our hands, I think, so we'll, we'll keep it to that. Good on you. Thanks, guys. Andy McGrath down in the Essendon rooms, the Bombers 43 point winners. So they're, they're, they're a hands. game and four and a half percent outside the eight, so it's not, it doesn't actually seem much. But it, it's not in their hands, though, is it? No, you, you no, said no it's, it's in not. their hands. They, they need a lot to yeah. pull for them. Yeah. Um, they, and there's, <laughs> there's sort of too many. I don't know. Yeah. There's games where the teams above them play, so one of them has to win, and this is they're a long way back in the queue. It doesn't seem like much, no. but they are a long way back in the queue. So if North, though, if there's some real upsets, like North lost to the Bulldogs, uh, Hawthorne beats Geelong, Sydney loses to Melbourne, none of those are, are massive upsets. That And and that helps in yeah. some different targets. And, and also, they had to beat Richmond no matter what, yes. whether they would keep winning or not. And now they're going to face Richmond and they've got a spate of injuries. Yeah, so it makes it pretty hard, doesn't yeah. it? Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> trying to put the rosy side on it's a little bit difficult. But anyway. next Friday night we'll be here yeah. and oh, it'll be yeah, a big game. Our best. A big chance. Uh, we'll let Gary Lyon loose on the Saints with Danny Frawley. Coming up next tonight, Essendon, 43-point winners over St Kilda. That quarter of AFL Nation was for Warrnambool Toyota Raglan Parade and the Toyota Good for Footy program, supporting local clubs. Following crunch time from one for Toyota and Subway, it's Gold Coast. First, he's kicked one from here before, and Drawry back, Lockie Weller, your moment! And Richmond. Has the name Carvis, can you believe? And the big Ruckman dribbles it through for a goal! It's the Gold Coast Suns and the Richmond Tigers. Join Brent Staker, Benny Jones and Tristan Fernandez live from Metricon Stadium for the best call of the Suns and Tigers on 1116 SEN, Melbourne's home of sport. Matty Hayden here, introducing you to the all-new Mahindra Pickup, a tough, no-nonsense ute. With an all-new signature tough stance, it's as rugged as ever. Step up to comfort with the new S10 Dual Cab 4x4 with sat-nav, reverse camera, climate control, ISO-fix child restraints, all standard, perfect for the whole family. The all-new, tougher Mahindra Pickup, starting from just $26,990 drive away for a cab chassis single cab 4x4. With over 40 dealers nationwide, isn't it time you tried the all-new, tougher Mahindra Pickup? No matter who you are or what your fitness goals are, we're here to tell you we know you can. How do we know? Because half a million people just like you are changing their lives every day with Anytime Fitness. That's 500,000 hearts beating as one, smashing their goals every single day. You can and you will with Anytime Fitness. Try Anytime Fitness for free today. Terms and conditions apply. Visit anytimefitness.com.au. Shopping at Sexyland is always more fun with so many hot items that'll ensure the answer is always yes and toys that were built with couples fun in mind. And no matter what your size, we have just the thing to wear. From couples toys and lingerie to lotions and potions, have more fun shopping at Sexyland. 11 stores in Melbourne and Geelong or shop at sexyland.com.au. Serious landscaping needs serious tools. And Makita's range of cordless power garden tools are all you need to power through the toughest of jobs. With over 180 tools on one battery, chainsaws, brush cutters, hedge trimmers and blowers, Makita's got you covered. 
Forget the fuel. Makita's cordless power garden tools have long run times, are quieter, and most of all, full of power. Makita, when power means business. Let me tell you the tale of the Subway Steak Sheriff and the Chicken Bandit. The Sheriff was a lawful man, some things you just can't fake. Like bacon, cheese, chipotle sauce, and juicy, tender steak. The Bandit had a wicked streak, and so the plot did thicken. With ranch dressing, bacon and Swiss cheese, and delicious home-style chicken. These two were built to satisfy every single type of craver. At Subway, you'll take a bite and say, that's my kind of Big Western flavor. Limited time only at participating restaurants. We can move the world for you, Cameron. We marvel at the icons in sport, like our footy heroes and their skills. It sure takes a lot of can-do attitude to reach those heights. Next time you're on the roads, look out for the iconic Cameron's can-do yellow trucks. From Melbourne to Adelaide to Perth, Sydney to Brisbane and everywhere in between, Cameron's keeps Australia moving. There's a little bit of can-do in all of us. We can move the world for you, Cameron's can-do. Cameron's.com.au Hey tradies, so you know that being part of the Beaumont Trade Club is free and that's pretty awesome because you get loads of free stuff like business cards, t-shirts and more. Oh, did I mention Beaumont's Trade Club is free? And right now you can score a tool bag worth 50 bucks thanks to our good mates at DTA. Just buy tools from the red hot DTA catalogue and it's yours. Yep, you guessed it, for free. On your DTA and Beaumont's. So any free moment that you get, become a member and get into Beaumont's. T's and C's apply. AFL Nation on 11.16 SEN for Macca's Mini Share and Footy, $5.95 with any purchase. And Liquorland, we've got a drink for that. Tonight's final score at Etihad Stadium, Essendon, 18-14, 122 over St Kilda, 11-13-79. We have the post-game awards coming up, but Gary Lyon, give me your assessment of St Kilda. Oh, I think um, Simon Lethleen's interview with us beforehand, before the game was instructional, and I haven't seen anything in that game in that game that's just been played that's going to change the mind on what I think is going to happen there. I think they're going to tip the joint upside down, Jared, um, from the coaching staff all the way through and the playing group. You wouldn't be feeling particularly safe right now. And, um, you know, there are players in this side that have been around for a while that are going to, you know, be a bit nervous. I'm talking about um, Loney and Nunes from a maybe maybe... Look, I might be right off the mark here, but if, if someone came for Jack Nunes, I reckon they'd be looking at those sorts of things. Jack Sinclair, they'd have to be looking at it. Um, working their way down. Blake Akers, they'd have to look at stuff like that. So they're the players that... They've just been around for a while, and they're not... They don't change or alter the way the game is going. They can contribute at times, like Loney did for a six or seven, eight, ten-minute period, but then they disappear, and they, they've got to be able to elevate themselves to a situation where they can affect change within a game and they've got too many that don't in my mind and I think it's going to be really interesting. Jack Stevens interesting. Jack Stevens is a really interesting player for me because he's probably seen as their best player maybe, you know, you can argue that but he is given the ball like given the ball in the manner that the very best ball users in the competition for other teams are. So you give it yep. to Luke Hodge or you give it to um, you know, Bailey Fritch these days from Melbourne. They'll give it to him because he's a beautiful user. You know who I'm talking about. Yep. I don't know why they give it to Jack because he's not a good ball user. He's not creative by foot. He's an up-and-under kicker, uh, a little bit messy at times. He's got a big heart and he runs hard and he wins it, all that sort of stuff. But if he's the man, if he's your designated um, uh, David Myers, then I think you've got it sort of flipped upside down. So I think there's a lot of work, a lot of work to be done there. There's a couple of players that I'm really happy to work with, and one of them is Tim Memory. I'm happy to work with Tim Memory. I think there's something there for him. Webster. Webster I really liked. Um, Seb Ross, you can't fault Seb mm. Ross's work rate. Jack Billings showed a bit tonight, which is he was in that category of those other players, but he finally looked like he took on some responsibility tonight. Well, Jack Steele has joined us in the St Kilda rooms. Jack, uh, we really appreciate your time. Thank you. No worries. Thanks for having me. Just give us your assessment of, of how you felt the night unfolded. Um... Yeah, probably wasn't how we how we planned. We started we started well like we did last week, and, and we just dropped off um, just before half time, and really cost us. We could, just couldn't catch up with the lead. So what happened in that in that four or five minute block on the way to half time? Do you think um, a few centre bounce opportunities? I think went um, the other way. They got a few goals from centre bounce, so that really killed the momentum for us. I think, and um, at the same time, we didn't take our chances when we had the momentum. So it really really did um, 
hurt us, I guess. How did you find Zach Merritt? Um, Jack, it was a pretty tough ask. He got a bit of the footy. What what, is, what have you found about in the last 10 weeks when you've had these run with roles? Um, I suppose I played on a, a few different players and um, some I found easy and some, some I haven't. So Zach was a, a bit of a tough one tonight because he runs so much and he gets to the ball so much and he's, he's that balance player. So if you're trying to win the ball yourself, um, which I'm asked to do as well, um, you just got to be careful. You've got to be aware of where he is all the time, which I don't think I did too well tonight. Lewis Pearce played his first game for two years. Jackie performed quite well. I thought he was very positive in the ruck and um, hopefully he can play the rest of the year out like that. Um, that'd be very, very nice if you could do that. Were you aware that they, they had no one on the bench at the start of the last quarter? Uh, yeah, we were told they, were, they only had one on the bench um, at the start of the third and I think that might have... Um, yeah, as soon as, soon as we got out there, someone else must... Oh, we got told someone else must have went down. So no rotations for them, which, um, again, we should have capitalised on that. How do you, when that happens, what is the best way of capitalising on it? Was there a plan? Uh, yeah, you just got to work. You got to work them off their feet because they've got no rest. Um, you got to run your little ass off and, oh, sorry, <laughs> if it's hard, but, um, yeah, you just got to you run and run and run and, until they can't go with you. And how are spirits down there at the moment? Um, yeah, not great. Um, I think we're just all a bit flat of, at how the year's gone, how, how the last couple of weeks have gone. Um, I think we we, saw, we showed positive signs. Um, just before the bye and, and a few games after the bye, which was um, we thought we were heading in the right direction. But I think now we've got to have a, a tough look at ourselves and, and then re- reset again. Good on you, Jack. Appreciate your time. Yeah, well seen. Well done, Jack. Well Thanks done. for having me. Cheers. Jack Steele fronting up after the Saints 43-point loss. All right, let's go through the post-game awards. The rookie of the day for MEGT, your local apprenticeship experts. Lewis Pearce for mine, Jarrett. Uh, even though he's been on the list for... I think he's sixth year. It's second game. Sixth and, year, he's a rookie. Yeah, he's almost he's, on the veterans I know, list. so it's it's a hard one because he, I don't know, he hasn't been on the scene for two years. He's played two games. That was his second game in league footy, and he played quite well. Yeah, he did. He did play well. Um, Free, Nathan Freeman has to Patton, fall into that category. Patton kicked the goal. Patton he, kicked one from the boundary. So the a couple of nice performances. Yeah. Hiring apprentices or tra- trainees, MEGT makes it easy. The Bendix breaks, big moment. Fit Bendix breaks at your next service. Nathan Brown's, unfortunately, on uh, Saad. That's the, the moment that's going to get talked about tomorrow and for the next few couple of days. Tackler of the day for Makita's cordless power garden range. Devin Smith again. Uh, just pipped Tip and Woody. I thought Tip and Woody had eight. They had eight each, but Devin Smith, uh, 50 well, The man one. we just spoke to had eight, Jack yeah, Steele. Okay, Jack so Steele and uh, Devin. They can share that. Makita's cordless power garden range when power means business. The In coach fact, of the day. I'm, I'm sorry, I'm just going to jump, rewind. They had the most, but Hurley laid the tackle of the day. Yeah, he did. Just after half time. Yeah, it's a cracker. The coach of the day for car sales. They can't sell every minute on car sales. Rating out of 10 for each coach. Yes, and then John Wars fold. Fair, well, well, they're four down. And they still yeah. won by seven goals, so he gets a solid eight. Mm. And you want me to give Rich? I'll give it. Yeah, I better, because you're good at work yeah. there. Um, four, four. I just uh, didn't see yeah. the imagination. I didn't see him take advantage of the situation as it unfolded with the numbers on the interchange bench. So, um, poor for me. Goal of the day for Coates Hire. Dev Smith on the left yeah. footer down here. Left yeah. foot curler. Ripper. Was a ripper. Ripper. It'll be a contender for this year's goal of the year. For Coates Hire, let's make it happen. The matchups for Lotto Land. Dream bigger with Lotto Land. I thought uh, Hurley and Membry was a really good duel. Membry got his... Uh, you know, you know, he had 46 in- entries. I thought that was a great matchup, and Steele and, and Merritt uh, was a was a ripper as well. And uh, you know, Lewis Pearce probably beat Bell Chambers on the night. It's a pretty good effort. Lotto Land's US power draw is worth over 600 million dollars. Gamble responsibly. The Glen Cameron can do mark of the day. Oh, long, long, yeah. long. Yeah, it was a nice, yeah. nice jump. Long. And the Self Wealth Player of the Day, Self Wealth nine dollar fifty flat fee ASX trades. Yeah, Seb Ross uh, was. Yeah, streets apart. Uh, the best player of St Kilda, 43. It, it wasn't that. It was just the last quarter. He was the one that was going to uh, step up. He had nine inside 50. So I think the, I think it was the second, third quarter where he was loose. It didn't have much impact, but most of the night he's pretty good. Two votes to Tip and Woody. I thought that uh, he was he was the one that kick started in there just before half time and, and and blew the game away basically. He ended up kicking five. So and you have seven tackles. I think he had six contested ball inside the forward 50. He's an absolute ripper. Uh, and three votes to, to number seven, Zach Merritt. He just continues to run. He's, his left foot lays alike. He turned a couple over, but, yeah, he had 36. And, 
and uh, three centre clearances, five inside 50s. Three to Merritt, two to Ooh, McDonald, Tipper, one to Ross. Stiff, yes. I'd written down Heppel. I, must have, I thought Heppel, that's where yeah. we were going. Self wealth, nine dollars yeah. fifty flat fee. Really? ASX yeah, trades. He was good. Don't pay more than nine dollars fifty. David Myers, what did he do? Well. Myers was good. Ooh, crumbs. Yeah, he was tagged Merritt all day. So anyway, <laughs> that's why I write it. <laughs> I'm not going to change it. Take feedback, well, Smith. No votes for <laughs> Kelly last Friday either. No. Uh-huh. Coaches both gave him ten votes, five uh, votes each. Yeah, well, uh, they were wrong. Yep, wrong again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> <was fine. laughs> Maybe just a closing word on Heppel, who hasn't featured in the votes yet. Super. But just how he has grown yep. in his yeah, leadership great. through this space. Well, I mentioned during the call, uh, Jared, that you save the greatest respect for those players who, regardless of circumstance play at the same level or a very you know, the, the margin between their best and worst is very very small and he's in that category right now he had i don't know was it last year or the year before where he had a season that mm. it was you know looked like he'd plateaued but i think after the tough start to this season he's the one that said right climb on my back and i'll take you where we need to go or i'll lead you where you need to go and today he was a great example of it when the rest of the Essendon team were flat and looked like they were you know disinterested, I suppose, is the best way to describe it. He played at the same level and then the rest of them slowly got themselves up or somewhere close to it. So, super impressed with the way he's been going about it. Dyson Heppel leading the Bombers to a 43-point win, 18-14, 1-22 to St Kilda, 11-13-79. A match with plenty of talking points. Injuries to the Bombers, Goddard, Fantasia, Hooker, and Saad, and the Saad incident just picked off by Nathan Brown in the first quarter. That uh, is probably the, the one with the most ramifications. Was there direct contact to the head? The, he caused the whiplash, which mm. well, but caused the, the concussion. Can yeah. they use that argument? Um, I want to have a think about that before Talk crunch time tomorrow. Um, in terms of the, um, yeah, the other yeah. consequences. Who, who was the other oh, one? Yep. The Hawthorne boat? Ryan Burton. Yep. Yeah, right. but Burton, had the, the ball was... Roughly in the vicinity. Yeah, this the fact ball that this is gone. so late will be really interesting. And he wasn't braced at all. No. Coming up next, Rowan Connolly. Give him a holler. Pump him up. Have your say. one 55 48 Holler for a Marshall battery for your local battery expert. Um, MarshallBatteries.com.au. <laughs> the Bombers by 43 points over the Saints on Friday night footy. AFL Nation for Macca's Mini Share and Footy, five ninety five with any purchase. And Liquorland, we've got a drink for that. When it comes to local footy, Toyota dealers are your club's biggest fans. As a part of the Toyota Good for Footy program, they've donated over $3 million to grassroots footy and local clubs. This Wednesday from 5pm, Blood Toyota in Geelong are showing their support for the St Mary's Football Club, located at Cadinia Park in South Geelong. There'll be a footy clinic, barbecue, plus a visit from St Kilda player Jaron Geary. Come and support your local club. Now that's Toyota Good for Footy. Serious landscaping needs serious tools. And Makita's range of cordless power garden tools are all you need to power through the toughest of jobs. With over 180 tools on one battery, chain tools, brush cutters, hedge trimmers and blowers, Makita's got you covered. Forget the fuel. Makita's cordless power garden tools have long run times, are quieter and most of all, full of power. Makita, when power means business. What will your next holiday stay give you? How about one that's less scheduled, more relaxed and more you? Where the wake-up calls will have the kids entranced. Where your personal chef knows exactly how you like it. Ah, there you go, gang. Where the complimentary refreshments will cool you all over. And connecting to the network means meeting lifelong friends. With 180 big four holiday parks across Australia, isn't it time you visited? Go to big4.com.au. Wouldn't it be nice to have a robot at home to mow your lawn and wash the car? At least you've got robot building supplies at work. Steel, sleepers, wire mesh, timber, roofing and more. Robots got it at the lowest prices. Like square and round tubing in Prime and Gal. Starting from $14.70 for 20 by 20 by 1.6 Prime tubes 6.5 metres long. Robot. Notting Hill, Sunshine, Preston, Dramana, Pakenham and Coldstream. Call 1300 Go Robot or order at robotbuildingsupplies.com.au. Are a B-O-T, robot building supplies. If you want a fantastic fresh new flavour fix, 
Then try the new smashed falafel at Subway. Middle Eastern seasoned falafel made from crushed chickpeas, red peppers, cumin and chilli. All delicately smashed and topped with a tangy tzatziki dressing. Available in your choice of a sub, wrap or salad. The new full of flavour smashed falafel now at Subway. That's my kind of Mediterranean yum. Limited time only at participating restaurants. Hi, Chris Scott here, coach of the Geelong Football Club. Starting out as a teenager, I was lucky enough to be guided by the best of the best. Without them, I wouldn't be where I am today. If you're thinking of taking on an apprentice, MEGT are the experts you need to guide your team to a win. MEGT will sign up your apprentice and check your eligibility for government financial incentives. Get your business kicking goals with MEGT, your local apprenticeship experts. Call 13 MEGT today. You can't get a Rolex for a hundred bucks, and there's no way you'd get a brand new Ferrari for a couple of grand. We all know you get what you pay for. The same is true with pressure cleaners. Cheap foreign imports lack reliable muscle, but Spitwater pressure cleaners are strong, powerful, and built to last. So avoid the fakes and get a pressure cleaner that's Aussie made for tough Aussie conditions. Get a Spitwater. Call 1300 Spitwater or see spitwater.com.au. Spitwater. That's what it does. Thor, Dandenong, Cranbourne and Geelong. Fitzroy, Werribee, Footscray, CBD, Brighton, Thomastown, Deer Park, Caram Downs, Hyatt, Lilydale, Ringwood, Ascot Plan ahead. Jump the queue and pre-book with Silvertop Taxis. Just download Silvertop Taxis smartphone app. Available for free from the App Store. Pre-book with Silvertop Taxis. AFL Nation on 11.16 SEN for Macca's Mini Share and Footy, $5.95 with any purchase. And Liquorland, we've got a drink for that. Good evening, everyone. Rowan Connolly with you here on AFL Nation. This is The Wash Up. We're here for Macca's Mini Share and Footy, $5.95 with any purchase. And we're here for Liquorland, of course. We have a drink for that. Essendon, big winners tonight, 43 points over the Saints. A few stories coming out of this game. Essendon, are they still a tiny, tiny finals chance? I suspect not, but uh, while there's life, there's hope. St Kilda, where are they at? What a, They would have to be the most disappointing team of this year, I think. Well, maybe line ball with Carlton, but uh, you know, for a side that two years ago was tipped to be a finalist, they have been incredibly disappointing. Alan Richardson, where's he at? Uh, contracted to the end of 2020, but um, I suspect the natives are starting to get pretty restless at uh, Moravan Way. And the casualty toll for the Bombers, um, finishing the game with no rotations. Uh, couldn't make a single interchange in that final quarter with four guys injured. Goddard, Saad, Hooker, Fantasia, Wangford too, actually. He hurt his shoulder but was able to... Come back on, so uh, a huge casualty toll out of the game for the Bombers, who, unfortunately for them, take on the Tigers next Friday night and then Port Adelaide and Adelaide. Uh, so, yeah, you'd think they're up against it in terms of not only winning those two games but getting lucky enough with other results to make the eight. Uh, that's not the end of the news ramifications out of this game, however. A couple of major incidents. Obviously, the uh, Adam Saad one will be the major talking point. Pretty late uh, hip and shoulder from Nathan Brown, and uh, you suspect he's going to do at least a couple of weeks' penance for that. Interested in your thoughts on that one. And Carl Hooker, too, a little uh, little sly one on the boundary there on Daniel McKenzie, which you think will certainly be looked at. Could he end up going for that? I think having been fined last week. A lot on the menu. Uh, heap of ramifications out of tonight's game, but uh, a heap of interest in the rest of round 21 as well. Several games uh, between contestants for the final eight. And we still might not be a lot clearer on the various permutations that are possible in the final series when this round ends. It's a fantastic end of the season in terms of just who will be part of this fi- finals campaign. Get on the phone and have your say. one three hundred twenty three fifty five forty eight is the number to ring. You'll be hollering for a Marshall Battery, for your local battery expert, marshallbatteries.com.au. What did you make of tonight's game? Well, was uh, I thought uh, St Kilda were actually looking pretty reasonable until about five minutes before half-time, and 
A uh, bit like a uh, bit deja vu-ish for the Saints supporters, I suspect, because uh, when Essendon got that little run on with the last four goals of the second quarter, the bottom just fell out of it. In a way, St Kilda were a bit lucky they didn't pay a heavy uh, price in that third quarter. Essendon kicking 4-5, probably should have had about oh, 7-2 or, or 8-1. And uh, then in the final quarter, with no rotations left, um, St Kilda got within, what, 33 points, I think it was. Or it might have only been 39, but there were still 14 minutes left in the quarter. Had they got the next one, um, you just thought, well, oh, gee, they might just get a sniff here because Essendon were out on their feet. And then uh, I think it was Jack Billings, wasn't it, took that mark and foolishly played on about 15 metres out. Ball was touched, uh, and that was the end of the penny section. Essendon finishing over the top of them despite having no interchange left at all. So... What uh, What is the major news out of this game? Is it uh, is it Essendon where they're at or is it the Saints and alarm bells ringing? Um, must have been a very frustrating 2018 for you Saints fans. How are you feeling? Do you think this list can go anywhere? Do they need rebuilding again? Which would seem staggering given it's been about a, uh, a four-year rebuild already that seemed to be going okay the first two years. And... Uh, just the bottom has fallen out of it. So many of those younger players on that list just seem to have stagnated rather than uh, developed. Get them a line. Uh, hang on the line, Dino, who's rung in already. We're going to have a quick listen now to John Warsfold's press conference. Um, so even losing, I think Goddard might have been the first one. Um, everyone adjusted really well, you know, and played different roles and credit to them all the way they understood those roles and how they performed them. You mentioned adjustment. How pleased were you with the emotion, obviously, then the way they adjusted after the side bump? Um, yeah, that's it's, the, the group's really maturing and learning a lot about um, how we can not let those sort of things affect the game when the game's going. So, yeah, of course you want to fly the flag for your teammate and show that support for them, but the rest of the game, once the game's going, we want to play the style of footy that we're working on, regardless of circumstances and scenarios. What was your reaction in the box to the uh, the side bump in terms of your uh, emotions and observations? Yeah, I only saw the replay once. Uh, so basically, um, yeah, it's disappointing when you lose a player um, from an, an avoidable incident. You understand you lose them because it's a tough game, but um, yeah, it was disappointing. What's the early word for injuries, John? Um, so Saad seems all right, but you know that's that's an unknown. Mm-hmm. Now they can feel good, but so he's uh, wait and see during the week. Um, Goddard, yeah, just felt something in his knee. Uh, he seems fine right now. He's walking around okay. So we need to find out what what gave him the the pain that he felt. Um, so that's a bit of an unknown. Um, Hooker just had some kneecap pain, so he's pretty confident that, that he's OK. And Fantasia was tight in the hamstring late, so um, it was uh, maybe precautionary. I'm not sure. You know, there might be something there, but um, certainly they weren't game to put him back on. Yeah, especially with, with Raz, because he had a hammy. Is it the same one that he had? I'm not sure. Yeah. No. Just with what insight can you give into the logistics of that last quarter having no rotations on the bench? Um, it was obviously just to try and slow the game down where we could. Obviously, if they had the footy, we had to defend pretty hard. Um, so understanding that we had targets for long kicks down the line just to slow the game up, we put Mitch Brown behind the ball as an extra defender to... Uh, yeah, it meant the game might have been played in their half a little bit more, but we could defend it a bit um, reasonably well. And then hopefully if we won the ball, be able to use it um, in a uh, sensible manner going forward, which I thought they did really well to still create good scoring opportunities um, and defended well. Did you concerned it might have uh, led to further injuries through fatigue? Um, no, no. It would have lent... It would have... Um, yeah, certainly meant more fatigue due to fatigue, if that makes sense. Did you consider doing what GWS did last week and playing short at times in the last quarter? No. Mm-hmm. How does Brendan's injury situation impact on the fact that you'll address his future and his talks this week? Uh, I don't think that will impact anything. 
John, how does your week look now and how unsettled does it become given it's a big game on Friday night against Richmond? You guys have to keep winning to make the finals. You've got these four unknowns plus you don't know what the effects are going to be of running out this game with no rotations. How does that affect your week going forward? Um, yeah, well, our assessments will happen as they as they always do post-game. We'll see how the players uh, pulled up, get, get all the guys assessed, um, have a look at what their extra workload was throughout this game and we'll get a, a measure on that and that will adjust just to the overall workload for next week. Um, some players, you know, may not have been affected too much, some some in a bigger way, so that'll just affect maybe how much they're on the track next week. You've played good footy back-to-back with a couple of weeks of unchanged teams as well. I mean, you got you might have to bring blokes in at, at a crucial time of the year. Yep. Um, you OK with that? You have Yeah, bring... we've done that all year. You know, we've, uh, we're slowly losing our back line. Um, you know, we've had, obviously, Gleeson and Ambrose out for um, for most of the year. Uh, but at Redmond, um, they're uh, they're holding up pretty well. So we've still got some good depth there. You know, Matty D's been in good form for us. He was unlucky not to play tonight. So um, we're, we're comfortable we've got the players there to come in and play well. Well, there's John Warsfold, uh, his usual expansive self. Actually, he wasn't too bad towards the end, was it? I thought we were going to get a whole sequence of monosyllabic answers. Uh, doesn't give much away. Even Brendan Goddard reckons he doesn't give much away when it comes to the question of his future. Uh, it will be interesting to see how the Dons approach this week and uh, just how light a week they have on the track. Um, I was sitting down near the front tonight and uh, some, of those, uh, some of those bombers were out on their feet at the end. I think Tom Bell Chambers... Looked like he could barely take another step towards the end of that game. Uh, Dino, you were on the line before. Please ring back, mate. Keen to hear what you have to say. And anyone else, get on the line. Give us a buzz. one 23 Holler for a Marshall Battery for your local battery expert. MarshallBatteries.com.au. Saints fans, really keen to hear from you. Where is your club at? Do we need another rebuild? Does this list have a future in it? Does it need the guidance of another coach? Uh, I know coaching changes sort of mid-contract are probably out of vogue again. And um, Richo being re-signed towards the back end of last year, there's still another two years left on this uh, extended contract. So it would be a costly little exercise where they decide to do it. Um, I'm just worried about where some of those mid-tier players for the Saints are, the guys who... A couple of years ago, we were getting very excited about, um, you know, Loney, Sinclair, um, Jack Nunes, an interesting one. He's been around a fair while now, and he never seems to sort of go to that next level. Uh, I think Jimmy Webster's had a pretty reasonable year. You know, I, I, there are positives. I guess Rowan Marshall, I thought, was pretty impressive tonight in the ruck, uh, up against a, a ruckman who's had a pretty good year. Nathan Freeman, finally getting uh, on the AFL park and uh, hopefully he can live up to the promise he was uh, supposed to deliver as a, a very early draft pick. Lewis Pierce looks okay. Blake Akers. Uh, some of these guys have had issues with continuity, but uh, where's the older end of that list at? You know, David Armitage, where's he at? Jaron Geary, where's he at? He's a captain. I don't know. I, I just see some list issues there. What about the Bombers? I was interested in... Um, Gary Lyons' comment post-game about Essendon ruining a wasted season. And I, I understand that on a um, superficial level, but I've got to say I'm not I'm not actually convinced it's a completely wasted season. Now, uh, clearly the sort of form they've showed in the second two-thirds of the year, they are good enough to be playing finals. But I, I think there, this was a side that still had a fair bit of... Um, organising to do and I think the side that started this year was pretty fundamentally different to the side which finished last year and I look at the comparison now between say that Essendon side that played in the elimination final and got spanked by Sydney and the side that's coming towards the end of its season a year later and I I think this version of Essendon is a far better um, side than the one which actually made the eight last year. Now the the bottom line of wins and losses would not suggest that. But I just think there's there's more substance about this team. There's certainly a harder defensive edge. And I think the stats back that up, the way they've climbed up the uh, 
the ranking ladder for contested possession, for clearances, for tackles. Um, they really have turned that around remarkably. I think players are understanding each other's games a lot better. I think Adam Saad and Connor McKenna um, have developed a really good understanding that perhaps wasn't there early in the season. And it was interesting. I had a quite a lengthy chat with a couple of Essendon people over the last couple of days just about the process of getting that list to gel. And um, the feedback I was getting is that, you know, it was a it was a harder process and a more time-consuming process than perhaps some people thought. And um, it's interesting, a couple of those recruits, I think uh, Saad, Stringer and, and Smith, at least a couple of them were making the comment um, they found the adjustment difficult because Essendon on the attack uh, tends to play a less structured sort of game than some of the other clubs. Um, it's very interesting, and I, I think uh, defensively that's not the case. Offensively it is, and I think maybe that accounts for some of the issues Essendon had defensively earlier in the season. Once uh, they drew, pardon the cliche, but a bit of a line in the sand after that Carlton defeat, almost immediately the defensive ethos and the um, I reckon the work ethic of that midfield defensively was the thing that made the difference. And that better defensive effort, I think, has really laid the foundations for most of the other improvements, which really have flowed on from that. I mean, the defence is conceding a lot fewer points. Um, the forward line is kicking a lot higher scores. I mean, last week they kicked over 100 points and lost the game. That was only the fourth time they'd topped 100 points for the year, but they've done it again tonight. So last two weeks... 16 goals in a losing score and 18 goals tonight. Last week they had 10 goal kickers. Tonight they had nine individual goal kickers. And this is without Danaher. So I just think that even if they miss the eight, they, Essendon really might be setting itself up for a very, very concerted crack at 2019. Whereas if they were to limp into the finals and be drummed straight out again, or if they had not started the season disastrously and been forced to sort of re-examine everything, perhaps they just would have bowled along a bit like last year, won enough games to qualify, got tossed out in week one and not necessarily made that much progress. I think, you know, in a perverse sort of way, what happened over the first eight weeks of this season has actually led to some pretty considerable gains. Now, um, if you're an Essendon fan... What, what do you think of that theory? Am I, maybe I'm talking through my hat, but that's the way I see it. I, I think they've actually set themselves up for a pretty good couple of years uh, rather than just sort of, you know, fleetingly paying a token finals appearance and, and being drummed straight out again. What do you think, Bomber fans? What do you think, Saints fans? Get on the line. Give us a whole lot for Marshall Batteries, one three hundred twenty three fifty five. 48. Uh, we've got Shane from Geelong on the line. We'll just go to this first break. Shane, please hang on the line. We'll be back very shortly here on AFL Nations, The Wash Up. AFL Nation for Macca's Mini Share and Footy, five ninety five with any purchase. And Liquorland, we've got a drink for that. Following crunch time from one for Toyota and Subway, it's Gold Coast. First, he's kicked one from here before. And draw him back. Lucky Weller, your moment. And Richmond. Has the Dan Curvis, can you believe? And the big Redman dribbles it through for a goal. It's the Gold Coast Suns and the Richmond Tigers. Join Brent Staker, Benny Jones and Tristan Fernandez Live from Metricon Stadium for the best call of the Suns and Tigers. On 1116 SEN, Melbourne's home of sport. At car sales, we sell falcons, not birds. We sell golfs, not tennis rackets. We also sell beetles, not bug zappers. Or couches, or fridges, or toys, or treadmills. We love cars. There are over 220,000 on our site right now. Visit the site devoted to cars. Carsales.com.au Australia's number one. For cars. Hello, Frank Walker from National Tiles. National Tiles is launching our all new amazing hybrid Timberlock flooring at an unbeatable $49.95 per metre. Yes, this amazing new National Tiles waterproof hybrid Timberlock flooring at just $49.95 per metre. For all technical details, 
and free samples on the all-new National Tiles waterproof hybrid timber look flooring, go to nationaltiles.com.au now. Hi, I'm Nathan Jones. On August 12, with the support of Ren Energy and the Victorian Government, Breast Cancer Network Australia is hosting Field of Women to represent the 18,000 Australians who will be diagnosed with breast cancer this year. Join me and the Ds to show your support by standing on the field before our match against the Swans. Kids under 15 are free and tickets are available at vcna.org.au. Come stand with me at the G. The Sound of Trams. A Melbourne icon. And so is this. Tasmania's famous Cape Grim Steaks, served at the Railway Club Hotel in Port Melbourne. Melbourne's original steak hotel. If you've not had lunch or a long lunch at the Railway Club Hotel, book ahead now, because the legend continues to grow. The Railway Club Hotel, Raglan Street, Port Melbourne. Booking details at railwayclubhotel.com.au G'day, Scotty Cam here. At your local Mind of 10, they're all for getting your day off to a great start. That's why they open early for you why they stock trade quality products and why they have a huge range of timber undercover. And as Australia's largest independent timber merchant, Mitre 10 will go to any lengths to get you exactly what you want. On site, on time, in full. Because they're the local business that values having yours. Mitre 10, always mighty helpful to the trade. Moving. What drives you? Europe Car, of course. With an average fleet age of nine months, renting with Europe Car means you're stepping into a quality vehicle with that new car feel. From affordable compacts, family SUVs, and even luxury European models. With 130 locations across Australia, Europe Car will get you there, wherever you want to go. EuropeCar.com.au With Hyundai offering great deals that'll get your heart pumping, now's the perfect time to get out and see more amazing in our sporty mid-sized SUV, the Hyundai Tucson. Starting at just $27,990 drive away with a $1,000 factory bonus, it's a real head turner with its sleek design and wow tech, including Apple CarPlay and rear view camera. Get into your nearest Hyundai dealer for this and other incredible offers across the range while stocks last. AFL Nation on 11.16 SEN for Macca's Mini Share and Footy $5.95 with any purchase and Liquorland, we've got a drink for that Thanks for your company, Roco with you here on AFL Nation's The Wash Up for Macca's Mini Share and Footy $5.95 with any purchase and for Liquorland, we've got a drink for that we want you to give us a holler and have your say on tonight's game or anything to do with the coming games over the weekend. one 23 48 Holler for a Marshall Battery for your local battery expert, marshallbatteries.com.au. That's exactly what Shane in Geelong and Simon in Seaford have done. Please hang on the line, guys. We're just going to have a quick grab from Alan Richardson's press conference. Back. So they've ended up kicking 13 goals from front half to another and that's a big number um and that really sapped a lot of our energy and a lot of our momentum we yeah you're right we realized they were a couple down but if you don't look after the footy then you're not going to be able to capitalize on anything you commented during the week that you think you're not necessarily that far off you're a little further off than perhaps uh you realized during the week uh we certainly further away from where we want to be the Bombers. Uh, we had a pretty young team out there tonight. I don't, I don't want to make excuses for them. I mentioned our ball movement and our, and our, our use was really poor. And this, there's periods in the game where they were able to get hold of us for, you know, for, for, for big minutes and that was, that was disappointing. Um, and that can happen with young teams and we have to learn. We'll coach them really strongly and, and make sure that they're better next time. But um, no, we think that um, we think we've got some players that are better than what they're showing at the minute. But we, we think that uh, that going forward, we've got a really strong nucleus. We we also made really strong noise that we need to support that group. What was your opinion on Nathan Brown's bump on Saar? Uh I didn't see the replay. I certainly saw it live. I thought he was late. Um, so I'd imagine that'll you know that'll get dealt with in due course. Louis Pearce looked like a highlight. Has been a, has he been close earlier? I mean, is it round 21? Is it, 
been a temptation to get him in a bit earlier. Yeah, yeah, there has. No, we, we were really pleased. I was really pleased with Louis tonight. I thought he was. Um, I thought he did some really good work for us, particularly early in the game. Some of his follow-up, his ruck work. You know, Bell Chambers has been in really good form. So that was pleasing. Um, we've, we have a unique situation where we have an alignment with Frankston as well as Sandringham, and so whilst our ruck coach is also their senior coach, we get we get good feedback. I watch his vision, but haven't been able to get to see Louis play at all this year in, in the VFL. You know, I go and watch Sandringham where 15 of our blokes are playing. Yep. So, um, but, but it's good that we've got a ruck coach there that, that reports back to us, and um, he's been building his game, absolutely, and... Um, um, no, possibly look at tonight's performance and perhaps we could have had him in a bit earlier. He, um, no, he was really strong for us. I thought Ben Patton did some good things. He started the game slowly, but as he picked up the tempo of the game, um, thought his uh, second half was, was quite pleasing when we as a team were not as strong as we wanted to be. Nice goal to, to finish off. Seb Ross in his 100 was really strong again. Uh, you know, he's, he, he plays the right way, Seb. He, you know, I thought he had a, um, a strong performance also. Is that a new challenge for Ben? I think he's been playing more half-back wing and then he was thrown forward tonight. Was that, was that something new to test him out? Or? He's done a bit of forward play in the VFL, um, but, but you're right, predominantly he's played, certainly his under ends was probably more a half-back wing, and, um, but he's got speed, he's a, he's a good user of the footy, um, he's got some attributes that, that means that he can be flexible for us, which is ex- exciting for us going forward. You've spoken about tonight. Yep. Um, in the lead-up after the Bulldogs game, you spoke at length about the response yep. you know when the other side counter attacked and again tonight late in the second quarter how disappointing was that that you couldn't put the brakes on when they obviously were trying to you know put the foot down in the accelerator and get a gap on you yeah we got booted in the midfield um, and um, it, it was a, a period again where we we, um, we just didn't step up and, uh, and those players need to for the second week in a row, they need to wear that, and and they're not shirking from that at all. They, they um, you know, they know that that's the responsibility. If you go in at centre bounce, um, you got to make sure you get it done. And um, and we didn't get it done tonight. There were times though when we did regain possession, even in that period where we just kicked it back to them. Yep. Um, so I'm not going to. I'm not. You know, it, it is. I can't underestimate strongly, or I can't. Um, make that point strongly enough that if you, if you turn that ball over as, as often as we did, as close to goal, it, it's just demoralising and it, and it saps energy and um, and it's a challenge to make sure that, and we want them to be strong there and to be able to respond in a positive way and clearly we didn't get that done tonight. Which are they constantly- Alan Richardson, uh, talking. I thought the most salient point of what we heard there was probably that last one about the turnovers, um, not just the frequency of it but the position of them. They seemed to turn it over right on that um, 50 metre arc and got punished by the Bombers every time and you just can't get away with that at this level. Um, I've been having a look at some very interesting stats which I want to share with you about the Saints, but we've got a few calls on the board. You can have your say too, one three hundred twenty three fifty five forty eight. Hold off for a Marshall battery. Let's get down to Geelong and have a chat to Shane. Hi, Shane. G'day, Roko. How are you, mate? I'm good. Actually, How are you? Actually, on the way back. Actually, on the way back from the ground, mate. Yep. Um, I, I'm your mate from Twitter. Uh, just, just got a bit of a joke for you first. Jack, be nimble. Jack, be quick. All the same cure as Jacks can't kick over a candlestick. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Well, it rhymes. It rhymes. That's a start. Yep. <laughs> what else did you got I, for us? Did I, did I see you in the number thirty-five jumper? Today, tonight in the Legends game there? Was that you? No. In Barry no, no. Young's jumper? No, I don't think sure. so. Oh, I'm positive, Shane. No, you've got to be a legend oh. to play in a Legends game, mate. I'm a fair oh, way short of that. You might have been a, I thought you might have been a fill-in. Jeez, he looked like you. Oh, really? It definitely wasn't Barry. Jeez. couldn't have been Barry Young. He didn't. He didn't even enter the field. Well, we were standing up behind, and 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 I said to me mate that was with me, I said, "There's Rowan. What's he doing <laughs> playing in the Legends game?" Uh, I can but, tell you, that's um, not a great rap for Barry Young, uh, Shane. Uh, no, I did. I, no. I, I did play in a uh, pre-season game with a few of the Bombers uh, blokes against Brisbane about uh, oh, six or seven years ago, and that just about killed me. So. Uh, I would completely topple over if I tried to do that now. So, no, my uh, my playing days are very much done. <laughs> um, look, do you, do you think we need 
a player like Wallace, like they're saying they're, they're chasing Wallace, mm. Beams or, or Dylan Shield. Like, I know we'd all love to get <laughs> Dylan Shield. All but if you if you had the choice of the three of them, um, Shield would be it. But but if we can't get him, I wouldn't mind getting Beams. I reckon he'd be just what we need. Oh, look, in that midfield for a couple of years. He's a marvellous player. It would be absolutely wrapped to get him. I, I suspect, um, I think they're going to be a pretty keen player on the uh, the free agency and trade market. I reckon probably the top priority might be a, uh, a midfielder with a fair bit of pace because I still think that's one area where they can get better. And I know they've got McKenna and Saad coming off half-back. Collier is still a bit iffy. You know, will he retain his spot on the list. I reckon they could do with some real explosive pace still out of that uh, centre square setup. One thing I will say about the midfield is it's probably batting as deep now as it has for a long, long time. And they've worked pretty hard to get that list flexible enough so that there are guys who can take a, a spell through the midfield and hold up their own, you know, playing either off a halfback flank or as a, a small forward. And, it's something Essendon hasn't had for a long, long time. So they're definitely getting there. I just reckon one more super quick mid might be the uh, the cream on top of the cake. So uh, we'll see what Adrian Dodoro does there in the trade period. Thanks for the call, Shane. Let's go to Seaford and say good evening to Simon. Hi, Simon. Good day, Roko. How are you, mate? I'm good. How are you? Mate, very, very frustrated. Yeah. I'm a 28-year-old man. Yeah. I was there in 97 when they got done in the last quarter by Darren Jarman. Yeah. I was there in 09 when uh, Tommy Hawkins hit the post. Now we've got the rule change based on that. I was there in 2010 for the draw when Goddard took that mark and we hit the front. Mm -hmm. I was there in the replay when Keith Shaw smothered Rewalt's kick to put some sort of integrity into the first quarter. And then ever since then, it's been nothing but a joke. We've got a listless club of list cloggers, feed raiders, half board flankers that don't get the job done week in, week out, like most other clubs have been able to do. And I don't think I'm going to see a St Kilda Premiership by the time I'm out of here. Dead set. They are absolutely pathetic. Did you, um, you know, I understand entirely where you're coming from and the level of your frustration. Did you think, say, at the end of. I mean, the end of 2016, they won 12 games, only just missed down the eight. I thought, actually, when I did my ladder for 2017, I think I might have had them fourth or fifth. Uh, I mean, were you were you not positive then? What what has happened to some of those guys? I wasn't I wasn't positive really about it at all, based on pure, purely and simply the heart and soul of the club left. Mm. I called Manny Hayes. Yeah. That bloke was a superstar. We traded blokes like, um, or you know, McAvoy and Goddard and all these guys went to free agency and stuff like that. We've since then got a bunch of blokes who can't keep the sharing. They completely slaughter us every single week they play. I go and watch, watch guys kick it out of the back line worse than C-grade amateur footballers. It is and in pristine conditions as well under a bloody roof. Yeah. How do you explain it? No, and well... I... Show, he's sitting there in the box. He's sitting there ranting and raving, can't do anything about it, but it doesn't seem like they're ever improving, mate. No, I, I have to agree with you. Certainly this year, I mean, you've gone from, what, 12 wins in 2016 to 11 wins last year to four wins. It's a it's a major, major drop-off. And like I said, it's that sort of mid-tier, those guys that have now been in the system four, five six years, um, who I agree with you. They, they don't seem to be improving. And I think you made another good point too. They've got a lot of guys who are almost specialist flankers. You know, you need you need midfielders whose support role is as a flanker. They seem to have too many guys that are the the other way around. Um, and it's, it's a major issue. And, uh, yeah, look, I understand entirely where you're coming from, Simon. I will, I will say, look, if you can take any heart from the last couple of years, it can turn around quickly. We saw the Bulldogs go from 14th to a flag in two seasons. You know, we saw Richmond have a stinker of a year in 2016. You know, maybe the Saints are, are doing a Richmond. Maybe this is just the year from hell and things will turn around. I've got to admit, I, I can't really see that happening, although I would have probably said the same thing about Richmond. Hang in there, Simon. Hang in there. Let's take one more before we get to a break. Uh, from Ballarat, Philip. Good evening. 
Good evening, how are you? I'm good. Good. I used to umpire junior footy in the Bullock Football League. Yep. Now, there's a guy, there's a guy coming over in um, well, West Coast Eagles by the name of Liam Diggin. I nearly cost him a grand final. Oh, yeah? Because yeah. he's... Yeah, cause he, he played under 14s at back of Smash Hat, where he got rooted from. Two weeks in a row, he swore. He went to the tribunal, and he got two weeks suspension because he got two yellow cards. Now, Andrew Gaff's decision went um, last Saturday. That should have been a red card. The umpires of VFL should have red cards. A yellow for swearing and for silly things. And if you do something stupid, straight off the ground, not can't be replaced. That's what we do in the Ballard Football League. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's certainly an argument that is gaining a lot of support. Um, I was quite surprised how much support it seemed to have in the wake of the, the Gaff incident. I'll, I'll be honest, I, I'm not on that uh, wagon, I, I think there's some logistical issues with um, a red card that might be a bit too difficult to work around, even at AFL level. But um, it's certainly, I think, going to be talked about because some pretty heavy hitters and influential voices have come out very strongly in support of it. And I know suburban leagues do it, as you say. So um, that's certainly some ammunition for people that would like to see that Bought in, and there is, of course, that argument about fairness. If a guy's taken unfairly out of a game, um, you know, why shouldn't the side that took him out be penalised for their part in him being out for the rest of the game? So, don't get me wrong, I understand the arguments. Just, I think there's a few too many logistical issues with it. Thanks for that, Philip. Um, jump on the line and have your say, Saints fans, Bomber fans, any fans. One three hundred twenty three fifty five forty eight for Marshall Batteries. We're going to get to our next break. Before we do, though, let's get the latest in sport with Val Febo. A sports news update. The US power jackpot at Lotto Land is worth over $600 million. Gamble responsibly. Thanks, Rocco. Val Febo here with the latest sports update. And in the NRL tonight, the Sydney Roosters have briefly moved to the top of the NRL ladder with an 18-14 win over South Sydney at ANZ Stadium. In a seesawing affair, the Roosters piled on eight points in five minutes to achieve an unassailable lead midway through the second half. Latrell Mitchell scored 10 points for Sydney, while Blake Ferguson gained 230 metres. In the other game tonight, the Warriors all but booked their spot in the finals with a 20-4 win over Newcastle at Mount Smart Stadium. In Rugby Union, Wallabies captain Michael Hooper has signed a five-year contract extension, keeping him in the nation until the end of 2023. The deal is worth more than $5 million and will keep the 26-year-old in the green and gold for the 2019 and 2023 World Cups. The contract also makes Hooper the highest paid rugby player in the country, confirming his status as the Wallabies poster boy. And just a quick live score at Lords India after a rain delay or continuous rain delays. 3 for 15, Murali Vijay gone for a duck. KL Rahul out for eight and Chiteshwar Pujara out for one. So difficult times for India in the second test in England. And that's the latest sports update. Stay tuned as Rowan Connolly dissects Essendon's 42-point win over St Kilda on the washout. Give him a call on one 23 55 48. AFL Nation for Macca's Mini Sharon Footy, five ninety five with any purchase. And Liquorland, we've got a drink for that. Need to move? People? Places? Product? Don't pay others to do what Avis makes easy. Avis trucks, utes, vans, buses and four-wheel drives. With a branch near you, visit avis.com.au. Hello, Frank Walker from National Tiles. National Tiles is launching our all-new European laminate timber flooring at an unbeatable $16.95 per metre. Yes, the all-new National Tiles European laminate timber flooring launched at an unbeatable $16.95 per metre. Don't miss these massive savings on the launch of the all-new National Tiles European laminate timber flooring. For free samples, go to nationaltiles.com.au now. If you're looking for a rewarding career in the plumbing, electrical, carpentry or engineering and fabrication industry, Kangan Institute is bound to get you there. With relevant on-the-job training from expert teachers, not just theory. Commence your trade pre-apprenticeship with Kangan Institute. Kangan Institute. Bound to industry, bound to succeed. Apply at kangan.edu.au or call 13 Kangan. 
Some or all of this training is delivered with Victorian and Commonwealth Government funding. RTO number 3077. Decided to go with the mahogany, with gold handles on the side and white roses. I think that should look really elegant. I like how you can see it all. Tobin Brothers Funeral's latest Memory Maker app gives you more choice than ever before. With the app's newest Build Your Own feature, you can now personalise your own coffin or casket. Choose the design, the colour, the handles, the drapery and flowers to match. Download Tobin Brothers Funeral's Memory Maker app from the App Store or visit tobinbrothers.com.au. Tobin Brothers Funerals, celebrating lives. Hi, it's Craig from EcoStar Double Glazing. Melbourne homes are too cold in winter because all the heating you generate is lost through your windows and doors. EcoStar's climate control windows with self-cleaning glass retain more than 80% of your home's heat, making them the most thermally efficient in Victoria. They also eliminate condensation and every time it rains, the glass actually cleans itself. The EcoStar winter sale is now on and for the next two weeks only, you can get up to 23% discount and a free upgrade to self-cleaning glass. For a free quote, call 1300 EcoStar. At Medibank, we believe better is peace of mind. That's why our members with hospital cover get 24-7 access to a trained nurse on demand so they know there's always help on hand. Search Medibank Health Advice Line. Thinking about getting a spa or pool? Now's the time, because the Spa and Pool Show is making a splash. Dive into all the latest designs for spas, pools and outdoor living. Soak up plenty of inspiration and ideas for your backyard and receive expert advice and huge discounts. Plus, win some amazing door prizes. Visit the Spa and Pool Show this weekend with free entry for kids at the Melbourne Convention and Exhibition Centre. So, take the plan! During the footy season, Sunday lunch now has a fabulous entree served up each week. Future stars. Future stars. 12.30pm every Sunday on Channel 9. It's football's only dedicated AFL trade and draft show on TV. Future stars with Nathan Brown, Brent Harvey and Kel Toomey covering all the latest news on player movement, up and coming talent plus the game's leading opinions on where your club's list is at. Future, Future stars. stars. Future stars. A must for every AFL fan. 12.30pm Sundays on Channel 9. Off the racks suit not fitting? Put it back and get Signature Bespoke. Two custom-made suits and two shirts from just $650. Don't miss the special fitting event August 16, 17 and 18. Make an appointment at signaturebespoke.com.au Moving has never been easier. Avis Truck Rentals has the vehicles whether you're moving one bedroom or five. With trolleys and hydraulic lifts, Avis Truck Rentals will make your moving day stress-free. Don't pay others to do what Avis makes easy. With a branch near you, avis.com.au you. AFL Nation on 1116 SEN for Macca's Mini Share and Footy. $5.95 with any purchase. And Liquor Land, we've got a drink for that. Roko with you here for AFL Nation on the wash up for Macca's Mini Share and Footy. $5.95 with any purchase. And for Liquor Land, we've got a drink for that. We want you to give us a holler. Have your say on 1300 23 55 48 for Marshall Batteries, your local battery expert, marshallbatteries.com.au. I've got some stats on the Saints I want to share with you in a minute, but Phil has rung in from Lock Sport. Um, pardon my ignorance. Phil, where is Lock Sport? Uh, between Sal and um, Tarabin. Ah, down the Gippsland uh, Territory. Okay. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. Beautiful what, up here. what do you got for us? Mate, I'm over people. I'm over the AFL, right? Mm-hmm. This red card, yellow card. We're not soccer. We mm-hmm. we come from Victoria. VFL was a, the best football game in the world. AFL, world nation now. People from America, China, they like how the boys play. What people? If they bring that that, that red card, we're not soccer. We don't, we don't get all these overseas people seeing the big hit and bangs and what they like to see. On the game, you get frustrated. Fair enough. But let's let's play the game. Let's play the game. Get reported. Get six weeks or whatever you want. You know how how, how bad it is. Mm. But don't bring that that stuff in. I'm, I don't condone it. I don't like it because uh, um, if they're going to do it, it's just it's like soccer. I want to go to Italy and watch soccer. Well, what um, what about the argument, Phil, that you know, if a guy is taken out of the game and it's it's really early in the piece, you know, five minutes into the game and he's taken out of the equation for the rest of the game, it certainly puts that side at a disadvantage. Does a side that does something 
a legal like that deserve to benefit by leaving the opposition one man short? Hello, there we go. All these new game rules are coming in. Why can't the AFL leave the game how it was like five, two years ago? AFL is changing the game every 10 seconds, to my, to my mind. Mm. Why does it leave AFL to the VFL, you know, the, the old VFL game, the same? If you get a report, if you misconduct, you get a fine or something like that. If it's serious, you, you, you go, you get banned and, and stuff like that. Leave the game alone. We don't need red cut. That's soccer. Let mm. soccer play their yellow cards, red cards. Leave AFL alone with that crap. Okay, Phil. Thanks for that. No, I get to, I get where you're coming from. I'm, I'm not sure it's a good enough reason not to alter something just because it's from another sport. You can get good ideas from other sports, but like I said, I, I think there's a few too many logistical issues with a red card. And above anything else, I mean, yes, the Andrew Gaff incident was terrible, but Geez, it's been 10 years since we've seen anything like it, really. I mean, you've got to go back to 2008 and you had the infamous Barry Hall-Brent Staker incident. You also had the... Uh, it's funny how this one never gets talked about as much, but Dean Solomon, uh, when he was playing for Fremantle on Cameron Wing, and Solomon actually got more weeks than Barry Hall. He got eight weeks for that, and uh, Hall got seven for Staker. They were both in the same season, but it was 10 years ago, so... I would argue that uh, these things happen pretty rarely. Do we really need to, you know, make what would be a fairly drastic alteration to the policing of the game? Um, and people use that argument too. What about if it happens in a grand final? Well, I think that argument's a little spurious as well, to be honest. I mean, um, you know, the Alistair Lynch, Daryl Wakelin uh, flurry of air swings in the 2004 grand final. I mean, um, nothing's happened like that ever since and that was 14 years ago so you know I think those things are pretty few and far between to be honest and I do tend to agree with Phil in terms of knee-jerk reactions now I just I've done a bit of uh, digging during the break so I just want to um, we're talking about St Kilda's list and some of their issues now turnovers obviously are an issue Um, efficiency uh, in attack is clearly an issue and I heard one amazing stat tonight. I think tonight was the 29th time in their last 42 games that St Kilda has kicked more behind than goals. Now, um, I'm pretty sure that was from a pretty reliable source. If that is the case, I mean, this must be one of the most sustained bouts of inaccuracy in the game's history. It's just ridiculous. So tonight, 11-13, um, you know, they missed some gimmies. Uh, Gresham missed a couple. Membry Missed a couple of very gettable ones. You know, Billings had that ridiculous one where he played on from 15 metres out and was touched off the boot. But, gee, I reckon they've got problems all over the place. And just to back this up, um, I was having a look at their rankings in various categories. Now, uh, these aren't differentials, I hasten to add. And a lot of people, uh, a lot of stats people believe that you're better off in things like contestable and clearances looking at the differentials, which is, you know, your total relative to your opposition. But in terms of the fours, um, St Kilda are currently ranked last in the competition for both contested possession and clearances. Um, this is despite the fact that they actually rank pretty high for disposals. So they they get a lot of meaningless touches. Now, I was looking at those rankings and thinking, well, who, who does actually win the contest for them and who does win the stoppages for them? Now, this is interesting. As far as clearances go, Jack Stephen is ranked number 25 in the league individually in terms of clearance wins. Their next highest clearance getter on the rankings is Tom Hickey, a ruckman, who is ranked number 44th in the AFL. So they've got one of the top 43 ranked clearance players in the AFL. Um, disposals. They've only got two players ranked in the top 63 in the AFL, and they are Seb Ross, who's ranked at number nine. He racks up about uh, 30 disposals a game. And Jack Stephen, who's ranked number 29 at about 27 touches a game. The next highest for the Saints is Jack Steele, who is ranked 64th. And here's the biggie for me, contest the ball. Now, we all know how important contest the ball is, and they're, you know, it's often a misunderstood stat. There are a lot of ways in which you can win contested possession. 
In fact, loose ball gets. Uh, some people may be surprised to know uh, counted as a contested possession. But um, the bottom line is, uh, in terms of the rankings there, St Kilda's highest-ranked contest, contested possession player in the comp is Tom Hickey, a ruckman, and he is number 52. So they haven't got a single player in the top 50 contested ball winners in the AFL. And that enough, I reckon, uh, that alone is enough to really set the alarm bells ringing, I think. They just haven't got enough players who can win the hard ball. They haven't got enough players who can win enough ball, full stop. They haven't got enough players who can use the ball well, and we saw great examples of that tonight. They haven't got enough forwards who can kick accurately. Uh, It doesn't leave them with a lot, necessarily. I think there's some major, major issues with that list. Um, and they've got a new list manager, James Gallagher, former Adelaide player coming in. Uh, good luck, James, because I, I think you've got your work cut out. We're going to take our final break now. This is the wash-up for Macca's Mini Sharon Footy, five ninety five with any purchase, and Liquorland. We've got a drink for that. AFL Nation for Macca's Mini Sharon Footy, five ninety five with any purchase, and Liquorland. We've got a drink for that.